Hello everyone, in lecture A3 of PEC, we will discuss the unit impulse response. The definition of the unit impulse response is the zero state response with the excitation of the unit impulse function delta t. Why must it be zero state response? We will discuss this in lecture A4. In this lecture, we need to accept this definition firstly. We will use three exercises to discuss how to solve the zero state response with the excitation of the unit impulse function. The first exercise is easy. A unit impulse current source supplies the electricity to a zero state capacitor. We need to solve the capacitor's voltage and current. The voltage and the current are in associated reference directions. For the unit impulse response, we will introduce three solving methods. The first method is called the integral from 0 minus to 0 plus. In this method, we list the differential equation of the circuit and find the integral of the equation from 0 minus to 0 plus. Let's focus on this circuit. In this circuit, we know IC equals delta T equals C times DUC over DT. This is the only equation we can list for this circuit. We should find the integral from 0 minus to 0 plus. The integral of uh, delta t from 0 minus to 0 plus equals c times the integral duc over dt from 0 minus to 0 plus. We eliminate dt here, and this part becomes uc plus minus uc minus. We know this is a zero state. So this part is zero. According to the previous discussion, we know this integral is one. So we know one equals C times UC zero plus. Then we know UC zero plus equals one over C. This exercise is very special. Only when C changes from zero minus to zero plus does this current source have a infinite value. When t is greater than 0 plus, the current source becomes an open circuit. In other words, you see 0 plus keeps constant after t is greater than 0 plus. So its waveform is like this. When t is less than 0, the value is 0. At t equals 0, the value suddenly changes to 1 over c. Obviously, with no ic equals delta t. So its waveform is like this. With this result, let's think about such a question. What's the effect of this unit impulse function to this capacitor? At t equals 0 minus, its voltage is 0, and at t equals 0 plus, its voltage suddenly changes 1 over c. That means qc0 minus is 0, and qc0 plus is c times 1 over c equals 1. For this exercise, the effect of this unit impulse function is moving a unit charge to the positive and negative plates of the capacitor at the moment 0. This is a physical explanation of the unit impulse function. The second is the observation method. We know the differential relationship between the capacitor's voltage and current is that uc0 plus equals uc0 minus plus 1 over c times the integral of ic from 0 minus to 0 plus. Because the initial condition is zero state, so there's no doubt that this part is always zero. Now we need to know if IC is an impulse function from zero minus to zero plus. If it's a impulse function, then we use this formula to solve. If it's not, then this integral is zero. And you see zero plus equals zero. But how to know if IC is an impulse function from zero minus to zero plus? We don't know. We can have a method similar to the piece wise linear method for the nonlinear resistive circuits. If we don't know, we can suppose firstly and then verify it. What do we suppose? We suppose from 0 minus to 0 plus, IC is not an impulse function. In other words, UC keeps constant from 0 minus to 0 plus. 
because you say zero minus equals zero according to our uh, superposition in order to keep constant from zero minus to zero plus the capacitor is equivalent to a voltage source with the zero value so this is the equivalent circuit in this circuit we can easily get ic equals delta t so our superposition is wrong from zero minus to zero plus ic has an impulse value According to this expression, we know uc plus 0 plus equals 1 over c times the integral of delta t from 0 minus to 0 plus equals 1 over c. Then we get the same conclusion as that from the first method. Of course, for this superposition, we can also get the same conclusion of ic as the first method. This is the second method.